you said that you used to, you've been to heart breaks, right? Oh, yeah. Broken hearts. Yeah. And what does a broken heart feel like? So, well, I'll tell you the biological you? reason, and I'll tell you what I feel. Okay. So biologically, when you fall, fall in love with someone or you really like somebody, it, there's a lot of positive chemicals that are being released in your brain. Right. And then when you don't get them, it creates a withdrawal because now you're not getting that reward. Right. But a lot of people will fall for people. I was hypnotized, by the way, by the culture to believe that there's a specific way to approach women. And there's a specific way to... The, the dynamic was a certain way. Pretty much, I lower all my value. I have no, I have no value. I, I don't stand by my boundaries. Anything they do is okay. Yeah. And that was what I was, I was programmed to believe. You were taught that. I was taught that. That's what I was taught. You know, uh, my dad didn't really, my dad, my parents are together, but my dad knew better, but I would never listen to him because I trusted the culture. I trusted Disney. I trusted my mom. You know, and that's what they told me. And, and I would keep complimenting these women. I would want to buy them flowers. I had no money at the time. And I would, I would you know, not eat. So I could maybe have them eat something with me. And then they would go sleep with another guy or, or just stop talking to me. And yeah. I'm like, what's going on? You know, what am I doing wrong? And then I started to study biology. I have a pet monkey. And I started to study anthropology. And I saw that we're primates. I'm like, well, we have instincts. Why are they instinctively not attracted to me? And what I realized is because I had no value. I wasn't, I wasn't valuing myself. Yeah, I, was, I was just giving them everything. That's a good point. Yeah, and then I'm like, okay, well, if I start to become more confident and have more boundaries and be like, listen, this is what I'm going to accept. This is what I'm not going to accept. All of a sudden, I got way more attractive and, and all these women were, you know, literally coming to me. Like, there was just, I, I, I would have to, I would be picky. I'm like, I don't even, before anyone <laughs> that would come my way, I'd be happy that someone even <laughs> likes me. And now I'm, I'm debating who I want to date. And then I'm like, well, what makes women really attractive? And the thing is, women are taught not to respect or appreciate men. Yeah. That's what they're taught. Yeah. And then what happens is, is then they're unhappy later on. Well, if you want a guy to fall in love with you, the secret is to appreciate him. Yeah. Because if, if you make a guy feel like he's a man by telling him how amazing he is, by complimenting him, by, you know, which, by the way, is the complete opposite of what women are taught. I have women clients that come to me and they're like, I don't know why he doesn't like me. It's like, well, how many times have you complimented him? None. How many times have you flaked on him? Five. <laughs> what do you what do you expect's gonna happen? So let me ask. You know? um, so like when you uh, were heartbroken and you were uh, hypnotized, were you hypnotized before you met the girl? And then once you meet her, you would go into that mold and deal with it in yeah. a weak way, in a wimpy way. So I was hypnotized to believe that I need to fall to in love with a girl. To act a certain way. Yeah, yeah, to act a certain way and to fall in love oh, with a girl. And then any time a girl would even give me a little bit of attention, it would trigger that state. And yeah. all of a sudden, I would just, I would fall in love with them in two seconds. Yeah. It literally, oh my God, she, she sat on my lap. She gave me a hug. She said she likes me. She said I'm, I'm handsome. Boom, I would just fall for them. Amazing. Right? And then as I came out of that, I'm like, what, what is this? This isn't even, that's not even me. Yeah. Those things don't, uh, those that's not why. Why would I give someone all of me for just a compliment or giving me a hug? Right? It just didn't make sense. Amazing. I got to ask you this because of time. In one of your videos, you said you met someone at a Starbucks and you, uh, and this person paid you $100 to coach them, right? No, they paid me $5,000. So it depends. I, I've had multiple clients that have gone to Starbucks. So they paid the first you time you're talking about was $5,000. The first time I ever met someone in person at Starbucks, I turned him into a client, and that was $5,000. And so he paid you $5,000 to? Yeah, I was a doctor. To teach him? Yep, to help him. He was a doctor. And so does he, is he a, a hypnotist now? No, no he, no, he wanted me to help him with his life. Oh, I'm, I see. Yeah, so, I'm pretty, so this is my, my job. I'm a success coach. So I help people overcome any limiting beliefs that have been programmed into them, hypnotized into them, in their wealth, health, and relationships. The reason people don't have money isn't because they can't make money. It's because they don't believe they can. Right? There was a time in my life where I was homeless. My family was homeless. Really? Right? Yeah. We grew up super rich. 2008, economy crashed. We lost everything. And there was a time where we were literally homeless. And my parents went into a different, they literally went into a different state. They went from this abundance where they can produce money just by making deals to this scarcity. And all of a sudden, they didn't have any money. And it just perpetuated. Constant no money, constant oh, stress. Yeah, yeah. And then I started to adopt that behavior. And then when I broke out of it, my parents broke out of it. So when I became really motivated and started making money, my parents became motivated, and now they're making a bunch of money again. Right so on. it was interesting because it took them out of that state. But a lot of people have this scarcity mindset in relationships, in, in their wealth, you know, even in health. So this, in this, were you surprised that this doctor was, didn't have confidence and that he would pay you $5,000 to coach him? Yeah, so at this time, pretty much I had two dogs that that night, th this is when I got this client, I made forty thousand dollars overnight. He was one. Of, he was part of it. Um, I had pretty much. He, he had paid me for for five sessions. It was a thousand dollars a session. But 
but I had two dogs, and I go to have dinner with my friend, and my dad calls me, and he tells me, both your dogs are dead. And I said, what do you mean? He said, they both got run over, both your dogs are dead. And I come home, <laughs> and I hear my mom crying through the front door. My parents are obviously upset. They're struggling financially at the time. I wanted to help them, but I wasn't helping them financially yet. I had no idea how. I right. was hypnotized to believe it takes years to be successful. I need a college degree. I need to be older. I need to be wiser. I need to be more experienced. That's what was programmed into my brain. And I'm looking at my dogs. I'm hearing my mom cry because the front door was open, but the screen door was closed. And I'm looking at my dogs that were my dogs. I would wake up with them. They would sleep with me. I'd feed them. I'd walk them. And an hour and a half earlier, they're alive. And, and now they're dead. And I'm listening to my mom and just her crying in the background. And I'm crying. And I'm like, what, what can I do to help my parents? I need to do something. I can't bring my dogs back. What can I do? Right. And I said, I need to make more money. And all these limiting beliefs popped up. You don't have enough time. You know, yeah. you, you, you're, you're not old enough. You're not experienced enough. All my mentors in this field said that it takes years to build up my business. And I said, you know what? Forget this. I went into my house. I put on the only suit I, ha I owned. I, it was like short on me at the time. And I left my house. And I, I went into every restaurant, every place I could go into. And I just, I would, I would be like, hey, can I, make an, can I get everyone's attention, please? If anyone wants to be very confident, overcome any limiting beliefs, come talk to me. I'm going to be here for five minutes, and then I'm leaving. And the first three, four, five hours, nobody, nobody would come talk to me. <laughs> and then I was about to give up, and I walked into uh, Panera Bread. And in the back, there was a bunch of actors and, and screenwriters. And I asked some guys, I'm like, what are you guys doing here? He's like, oh, I'm an actor, I'm a screenwriter. And I was just so determined. I'm like, I, I, there's no way I'm not going to leave here without making $40,000. Because I was thinking about a podcast or an interview I heard with uh, Tony Robbins from oh, when yeah. he was young. And he said yeah. he would charge people $1,000 uh, for a half an hour session to get rid of any fear or phobia. And he had a six-month waiting list. I'm like, if he could do it, I can do it. Right. And he started young, too. I'm like, there's no way. I, if he could do it, I can do it. How old were you at this time? When you I was 19. Oh, okay. So I was 19 here. And then I, I go to this Panera Bread. I'm in the back. There's like 40 people. And I make an announcement. I'm like, listen, you know, if any of you guys want to be the best actors, you want to be celebrities. And I just, I just got in state. I, I, like, I, I hypnotized myself to get into this peak. Like all of a sudden, I became an amazing speaker, very confident. Out of nowhere, I just said I had to do it because it was not working. I was about to give up. And I'm like, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to do it right now. And I had like 12 people right there sign up. For 12, like, like 12 people paid me $1,000 for a session. Some of them bought two sessions. And out of Amazing. nowhere, and that was it. I'm like, okay, boom, I'm, I'm on it. I'm not going to give up. And I just kept going until I, it was, I left my house at 8 p.m. on Saturday. I came back not on Sunday, but the following morning on Monday, 5 a.m., I was exhausted, but I had $40,000. I made $40,000. That's amazing. Yeah, and that was it. And then I realized money is easy to make. Up until then, I would charge people $150 a session and have a hard time asking them for money because I was programmed to believe that I didn't deserve money, money shouldn't come my way. And after that, money is just easy. So how much do you charge per session now? One-on-one, uh, -on -one, I charge 10 k You charge a person $10,000? But I'll tell you why I charge them $10,000. Why? Because if somebody comes to me, they're not confident. They don't believe they'll make money. Or let's say they already have money, but they don't believe they can have a relationship. They're, not, they're, they're smoking. They're addicted to something. In less than an hour, I reprogram their brain to eradicate everything they've been programmed to, all the limiting beliefs they've had their entire life, everything, any fear, any anxiety they have that's been programmed to them their entire life, which will take them a decade to get over on their own. In an hour, I get rid of it, and I replace it with an incredible sense of self-confidence, uh, I mean, the ability to literally go after anything you want, and these people's lives change at a level that you've never seen before. Tony Robbins charges people a million dollars a year to see them for an hour a month and then gets equity in their company. I'm better than Tony Robbins. I'm going to be bigger than Tony Robbins, and yet I charge 10K. So to me, it's not that I'm charging you 10K. It's what do you get for 10K? If you can go to the supermarket and on the shelf was the mindset of your dreams, the mindset that you would have worked your butt off for, like everything you've ever wanted to think about, the way you wanted to feel, if that was on the market, how much would you pay for it? I give it to people for 10K. No one on the planet can give it to somebody. <laughs> so what, you do, what do you do if people want your help, but they don't have $10,000? So I have seminars. I also have groups that oh, I work I with, right? So for example, I have groups. If I can't work with someone one-on-one, -on -one, I love helping people. So my, my passion is to change lives. Right. It's not just about, hey, pay me money. I'm not just in it for the money. Right. But if someone wants my time one-on-one, -on -one, I charge them 10K. Right. But you know, I, work, I have seminars all over the country. I work with people. I, work with people. I have free seminars. You know? like I'll literally walk around and speak just because I love changing lives. That's, that's the way I got on the show. I, I got called up to speak on stage for free. I was there for free. I, you know, I love helping people. Right. That's why I do this. But if people can't afford it, you know, I, have, I have things that, that I have free content on my Instagram, free content on my, on my YouTube. If they want to come see me speak, a lot of time I speak for free. You know, I have free seminars in LA every two months. So how can a person tell when they're going the wrong way or they, they want the wrong things or whatever? So there's what you know you want and there's what you think you should want. What you think you should want 
is what, when people tell you, hey, do drugs, but there's a bad feeling. People tell you, hey, you gotta go to college, you gotta work a nine to five, you gotta build your way up the ladder. You might be excited about it, but there could be a feeling that says, well, if I could be a famous singer, if I could be a famous actor, if I could start my own business, I would. But then these limiting beliefs stop you from even seeing that as a possibility. Amazing. So, How would you define yeah. uh, success? Success? You said that you, know, you could be successful. Yeah. What is success? How would a person know if they're successful or not? So, so success to me isn't making a bunch of money or having an amazing relationship. Success to me is being able to accomplish the things you want. If you want something and you can get it, you have success. And the ability to be able to get anything you set your mind to, the more, the more you could do that, the more successful you really are. That's success to me. It's just the ability, you set a goal and you can actually make that your reality, that's success. You talk a lot about confidence. How would you define confidence? Confidence is comfort. The more comfortable you are, the more confident you become, right? Now, a lot of people think confidence is a super state, but the truth is, if I asked anyone to pick this cup up, they probably could, and they'd be pretty confident in doing so. They'd right. be so confident they could bet me $10,000 that they could pick it up, right? And they would pick it up. So they're, it's because they're comfortable doing it. Now, if you want to become more confident, step into the things that make you uncomfortable. You're not comfortable talking to people? Talk to five people a day. Yeah. You're not comfortable getting a girl's number or a guy's number? Get five numbers a day or try to. You know, you're not comfortable public speaking? Go public speak. That's how you get more confident because what's going to happen is your brain turns on and it says, oh, these things aren't that uncomfortable. All of a sudden, I could do the things I want to do. And when you become confident, your brain thinks differently. It operates differently. It's much, much faster. Your memory is better. You're more efficient. It's, it's a you know this, right? When you turn your confidence on, all of a sudden, you're out of this trance. You become present. You're here. You're not in your head. You're, out, you're comfortable. Do you believe that human beings are in a fallen state? Oh, 100%. And what does that mean? So it means that they are not able to tap into their potential because they have been programmed into this fallen state. They've been programmed to be limited because the way that they can be controlled is by not believing that they can have the power that they really have. If someone really believes that they can't do the things they want to do and they need to depend on the government, they need to depend on other people, and at the very least, they need to go through the system. They need to be sheep. You need to go to college, pay us a bunch of money to then have a bunch of debt, never make any real money in your life, potentially buy a okay house and then retire at 65 to having not really that much money. If you buy into that, you're buying into this yeah. fallen state. You're buying into the ability to never tap into what could have been your potential. There's no such thing as there's only so many rich people in the world. There's, there's enough money to go around for everybody. Yeah, it is. just, you want to make the money, we're in the best country to do it. So do you, are you married? I'm not married. Do you date? I do. You date? Yeah. And do you date a lot? Not anymore, no, I have a girlfriend now. You have a girlfriend? Yeah. And is that boring? No. So it gets, it's boring. It's boring when you don't believe that if you're not fulfilled, a lot of people settle. They'll go into a relationship or a marriage that they don't actually want to be a part of. Right. The person doesn't meet their needs. They're in a fallen state. They think they have to get married. They think they have to have a family. And they just do it. And then they're not even happy with the other person. They, like, for example, a lot of the time, religion will program people to just marry someone quickly. Right? You know someone for a month, and you're just like, okay. But if you know them at a deep level, which most people don't, then they're like, okay, well... Awesome, let's get married, and they're just, they're there, right? So are you able to get any girl that you want? Yes. You can get any woman you want? Anyone I want. Amazing. And so what made you settle with one at this point? So I, there are specific qualities I look for in people that stand out to me. The biggest thing I look for is not to have a lot of women. It's to have a connection, <laughs> right? It's to have one connection. People are looking, I, yeah, it's fun. You can have, you know, you can be like a playboy, but at the end of the day, it's not as fulfilling to me as having an actual intimate connection with somebody. And if I can connect with somebody on that level and find someone who meets my values, shares my beliefs, you know, and is supportive of me, I'd rather have that than a thousand women that, that would, you know. And so how do you handle this one girlfriend when she get out of control? You know how women go nuts sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, they're so like mad about nothing. Communication. Now that you have one, they'll be jealous of you. Uh -huh. All these women pulling, you know, pulling so, on you, so, so the thing grabbing is, on you. How would you deal with that? Yeah, so, so most of the time, if a woman's like that, I probably won't even date her. It's a red flag to me. But let's say you know, we're in a relationship and there's something I do that upsets them. I'm amazing at communicating. I'm, I always talk it through. Like, okay, hey, what's bothering you? I tell them what's bothering me. If something bothers me, I say it right away. Hey, I don't like this, don't do this. And if they continue to do it, I just leave. I, don't, I never stay in a relationship longer if it makes me unhappy. If something's unhappy, if I don't like what I do, for, if I wake up tomorrow and I say I hate what I do, I'm, I'm gonna stop doing it. So you woke up tomorrow and you like bother with this girl you're dating now because she's irritable or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Would you just say goodbye? No, so I'll work it out. I'll, I'll, I'll communicate. But if it's not going anywhere when I try to communicate, 
what, let's say she's not being receptive, she doesn't want to change, she's yeah. just going to continue clashing with me, then I'll walk away. You just say goodbye. Yeah, but, it, you know. Would the, you be heartbroken to let that go? Of course. You know, and why would you be heartbroken? And you see that this is not what you want. It's not going to work. Because you could still love somebody, but I'm not going to hold on to that, right? A lot of people will be heartbroken and they're just going to sit in their bed and not do anything. <laughs> I'm not. I'm going to make progress. Yeah. Okay, it didn't work out. Yeah, that's upsetting. But you know what? I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to grow from it. I'm going to find someone who's you know is going to match me. Because in my mind, there's always going to be someone who's going to meet my standards. If I'm with somebody who's not currently meeting my standards right now, even if I thought they were, all it means is now I'm going to get closer to the person who finally will. So does the heart Broken mean that being becoming heartbroken over this particular girl, does that mean that you were hypnotized by her? Yeah, so it, I mean, in a way, you're hypnotized to believe that this person is going to be what you want, right? Oh. So you have this filter of this is what the perfect girl looks like to me. So, and then, as a hypnotist, though, can you see that she's hypnotizing me and not really real? So now, now I see the difference, right? Before, I, like I said, a girl would sit on me and I'd be like, oh, this is right. the girl I want. Yeah. Now I'm much pickier because it's a lot easier for me to read between the lines. Like, is this actually someone who meets up with my values, someone who actually believes what I believe, who's going to support me in the way I want to be supported, who's going to love me in the way I want to be loved, rather than, you know, just find someone that looks good or something meets my... Like, for example, you see this cup. I want a cup that looks exactly like this, except let's say the cup was missing everything except the handle. Right. Right? But in my mind, I see the handle and the whole cup. <laughs> Right, but in reality, it's just a handle. Yeah. I want the full cup. So what what I do now is instead of just seeing the handle for the handle, I look at everything and I see, okay, does this person actually have all the qualities that I'm looking for? And if they do, then I continue. I don't rush into things right away. Um, so how long have you been dating this particular one? Uh, so I've known this one for three years, but uh, we've we've really recently just kind of kicked it off. Are you starting to see? You know what? Uh-uh. Mm. Like, uh-uh. It's, like, so it's the other way around, to be honest. I actually, I, I, I was the other, I would walk into it thinking it's not going to work out. And all my beliefs of oh, like, I see. so I was actually hypnotized the other way. I was like, there's no <laughs> way I'm ever going to find a girl like this. And, you know, I would just walk in waiting to find something wrong. <laughs> and then nothing's wrong. It just is better and better and better. Oh, I see. Are you a Christian? No, I'm Jewish, actually. You're Jewish? Yeah, I'm Jewish. You don't look like a Jew. I know. That's what everyone, even my mom says this to me. I'm thinking maybe you're Arab or something like that. Yeah, no. Or Armenian or something mm -hmm. like that. My parents are both born in Israel, um, and then I'm a first-generation American. But, you know, my mom's side is Spain, Morocco. My dad's side is Austria-Hungary. So, wow. Yeah. Do, would another Jew recognize you as a Jew? Only if I uh, put my necklace out. And I speak Hebrew fluently, so I mean, if I speak Hebrew, but for the most part, probably not. That's amazing. Yeah. Isn't that like amazing? I, you don't look like a Jew. I, <laughs> it's funny, right? <laughs> <laughs> so if you're around a bunch of people who hate the Jews and they start talking about the Jews Doesn't because they me. don't know that you are a Jew, what would you do? Doesn't bother me. I listen. Uh, it's just their beliefs. They're hypnotized to believe that. Yeah, that is so true. Yeah, and I just listen to it, and I can, I'm a hypnotist. <laughs> I just change it. Is there a difference you know? between men and women? Yes, What's of course. The of course, there's a difference. What's we're, the difference? We're, so Other than body parts. No, 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 yeah, no, no. Be, men and women are wired completely different. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we're a hundred percent different. What women want, what men want, are different. Why are we attracted to women, and why are women attracted to men for the most part? I'm talking about heterosexual men and women, right, right. and that kind of relationship. Right. The real deal. And the fact that we put it under one umbrella is not true. It's not true, right? Right. If you Absolutely, look at man. biologically, if you look at it, right, why? What do women look for? Their brains are wired, by the way, to look at small things, to be narrowly focused, right? Men are, look, are, are more big picture. Right. So well, the reason is, is because when we're in a tribe and there's a tiger over there, we're not going to be looking at the fucking water boiling and seeing if there's, you know, any dirt inside of the, you know, the water. That's <laughs> not our job. Our job is to look to see if there's any threat. A woman's job in that tribe is to take care of the kids, take, make sure that nothing's going on with them, take care, make sure that there's no f poison in the food. You know, to cook, gather things, hunt, you know, they, they, we had different jobs. Like, we, we were hunters, men are hunters yeah. and protectors, and women would have a different job. So they're programmed that way. We're programmed differently. And, and if you talk about relationships, we're also programmed very differently. Yes. Right? And oftentimes, how women act towards men in our current society is exactly what they want men to act. But most women don't know what a strong man is because most men are not strong anymore. That's right. They're hypnotized to be weak. Yeah. They're being weak. Yeah. Right? And we've gone into this very... A feminine, like, like it's bad to be a masculine male. It's bad to be a man. And women just get more and more frustrated because they don't actually want that. At the end of the day, they don't want that. But if they meet a guy who is masculine, they'll, they don't understand it because they're so used to walking all over, all over these weak yeah. men. And they'll try and bring him down. That's why you see what's happening with Donald Trump right now. People hate him. Women, some women hate him. But these women are the ones that hate men. They're the ones who are 
I, they're not like feminism. I, I support. I believe equality. I think we should be equal, hundred percent. In That's, what way? So I think men and women should be equal because we both should have the same rights. We should be able to do the same things, right? But I don't think equality means that men, if, for example, if a girl were to accuse a man of rape, immediately his life is, is, is tarnished. Yeah. But if it's a false accusation, what happens to her? Yeah. Right? right. And, they, and then they say, it's, oh, well, that happens because then we don't want to discourage women from, uh, you know, talking about it. But you're also encouraging it, right? We, we, we've gone to this other extreme. Before, we wouldn't believe women. Now we believe women. Right, Every, oh, but, and you should. But you should look at statistics, and also, I believe in innocent until proven guilty. Right now, yeah, it's guilt. Right. right now, it's accusation. You're guilty. You're guilty. Yeah, and and it ruins your reputation. Even if you prove you're innocent, you're still yeah. never innocent. You're gone. And that's not okay.